everybody. Welcome to the Q&A Cafe. We are here today uh, on this summer day, this hot summer day, at the Georgetown Club in Georgetown. And uh, we're really happy to have you with us uh, on YouTube and at home and here in the audience. And uh, we, welcome, uh, we welcome a unique guest to the Q&A Cafe today. Um, I, I will uh, say with all honesty, I think it's the first time I've interviewed a rock and roll star in uh, all the almost, what, 15 years I've been doing the show. And so welcome, Derek Smalls. Thank you. Here from, here, here, here from the United Kingdom, right? You, you're living there now or the south of France? No, no living in the United Kingdom, uh, south of France is uh, a little too rich for my blood. Okay, but there are. That is a, a known uh, retirement community for... It is, for but, the people who can afford it. Or who retire, but you're not retired. So. I'm not retired. I'm definitely not retired. Um, I've, uh, I was waiting for my band, spi former band, Spinal Tap, to uh, basically do version 3.0. Like a reunion. Well, we had played... Gla Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> we had played Glastonbury Festival uh, just outside London in 2009. Yes. And then we played Wembley Arena in London in 2009. And when you play Glastonbury Festival, 130,000 people. That's and in Wembley Arena, 15, 18,000 people sold out, no, no seat to be had. Uh, you think, here we go, right, here we go. Tap uh, 3.0. And I'm sitting in my flat, waiting for the phone to ring. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't ring. And so I do the natural thing. I ring up the telephone company. <laughs> and they said, it's not us. <laughs> and that's how I realized, there we are. And that's how I realized the band was no more. There was no, uh, there was no reunion. And it was up to you yes. to uh, launch yourself, so to well, speak. Well, do you remember the, the great supercontinent Pangea? Yes. You all remember Pangea? Yes. I just learned this. It means all of Earth. Pangea. Talk, speak the Greek to yourselves. Um, <laughs> and it, if you were here 300 million years ago, there was Pangea, right? Well, and I, then, well I may have been here. I don't, I'm not and sure. And then three, take it with me. I'm and then three million years later, you turn around, and it's, now there's South America and Africa and Australia but there's no more Pangea. And that's what Spinal Tap was like. <laughs> so I looked around, it wasn't there anymore. And I decided, well, I first went into television. I was a, um, a judge on a reality competition show in uh, the Netherlands called Rock Stars, where there's, you call it a Z, Z. a Z. And uh, then they came to me, I mean, we did very well. We were beating Dutch Idol like crazy. And, <laughs> Then the producer came to me and he said, Derek, we're going a different way. And I said, well, I'm, I don't even drive. He said, no, we're going a different <laughs> way with the show. We're going to, to redo it as Tomorrow's Hip Hop Heroes, also with a Z. <laughs> so I think it was between keeping me and keeping the Z. But uh, long story short, I had to get back into music. And there's this, fortunately, Hello. Uh, fortunately, there is this. That's John. Hello, John. Fortunately, there's this thing called the uh, British Fund for Aging Rockers, which uh, gives grants to aging rockers. It's the money left over from austerity. And uh, so I applied for one, and they said, What's your idea? And I said, My idea is you give me money and I make a record. And they said, No, you need an idea. Well, concept. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, concept. Yeah. Concept, yes. And so I thought, they say right about what you know. What do I know? I know I'm getting older. So I write How about- How old are you, Derek? I'm 75. 75, you April, look good. April 1st of this year. Well, happy oh, birthday. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, it's an April Fool's baby. Are there any other rock stars that are, who are that old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> you probably mean are there any who are that old and alive? <laughs> Uh, and touring. And touring, yeah, there are. Uh, mix near there, I think. So anyway, I, I wrote these songs about what it's like to be getting older 
and uh, the challenges and the rewards mm -hmm. of that. And so the record is called Smalls Change because I'm Smalls and I've changed because I'm a solo artist. And the, the subtitle is Meditations Upon Aging which they are. Which a 75-year-old should know about. Should, yes. if there's any well, fairness. Well, if world. they want to last another 10, 15, 20, yeah. 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 we're going to be optimistic here, yeah. aren't we? Sure. One does start to think about that, though, at 75. Should I buy vintage wine or should Drink I it not? now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I drink it now. Do, oh, I buy, I do I buy a puppy or do I buy yeah. an aging rescue? Do I adopt an eight-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are these uh, decisions that change, small yes. change. Yes, yes, there is. But, uh, but that's not what I, I didn't write about not getting a puppy. <laughs> no, There's I know. There's no song or no, We're, we're, we're going to work our way okay. to what you... But uh, don't, don't buy the record. Buy the record, but buy don't it. buy the record if, uh, expecting the song about do I buy a puppy. <laughs> we have a version of it here, and we were playing it at the beginning, and we'll yeah. play it again after we're done, so everybody get to hear a little bit of it. But it... Uh, it, as they say in the industry, though I'm not in it and I may not say this well, yeah. it dropped uh, in April. It dropped uh, mid-April. Mid-April, yeah. yeah. and um, you. And then we picked it up. And then you picked it up. <laughs> yes. And you, you did a, you did something else that was uh, quite interesting. You, you launched by performing with a symphony orchestra. Yes. That's part of your concept. That is. That was a major part of the concept. Was that. Uh, 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 a, a level of grandiosity mm -hmm. to compensate for any lack of substance that people might <laughs> uh, And so we performed with the Louisiana Philharmonic in New Orleans uh, at the legendary Sanger Theater. Wonderful. And we had, uh, uh, it was a big show, and uh, we had, uh, we did Big Bottom, which was the tap favorite, uh, and uh, so we have the Low. What did you open with? Did you open with that? No, opened with the, the first thing on the record, which is called Open Chur. Open Chur. <laughs> and which I can recite for you now. It's, it's basically the manifesto of, of the what's record to come. of the what's to come. Age, now there's music usually with this. Swelling? Yes. And then it goes down again. <laughs> <laughs> Age. It is a thread, you might say, through the whole album. <laughs> Age is but a number. Number is but is just a word. Word is just a thing. And that's how it opened. And then the music. And, and then, then the, the music. music. Well, the music yes. swelled at that point. And um, so uh, you started in New Orleans. Uh, with the, sh with the with the tour. Do you have symphony or oh, so? Let me just say something else about this. You have collaborations yes. with an incredible range of other rock stars. Some may be as old as you. Some may not. I didn't inquire. You didn't. Age wasn't. <laughs> they uh, didn't have to show. I just did. legendary status, <laughs> right, right? They right. just had to be. So and people who answered the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the do you have symphony orchestras playing with you also in any of these tracks? Yes. The, Bud the Hungarian Studio Orchestra, which is a proper orchestra that uh, plays every day. Mm -hmm. They do film scores and, and adverts and all this thing. Yeah. And uh, wonderful, fast, cheap, good, mm -hmm. which you know, they say you can't get. Uh, <laughs> but we did. Did you go to them, or did they come to you, or did you meet, uh, uh, should I say, uh, up here somewhere? <laughs> No, Derek. Cyber, cyber oh, meeting. Oh, I see. Yeah, no. Uh, they performed on the record mm -hmm. in Budapest. We were in a studio in Los Angeles. Wonderful. And connected. The new age. It's not the way it used to be when you started out, is it? No. But then we, I went to Budapest and was actually recording them uh, for a portion of the live mm. show that mm -hmm. we did, where we had the orchestra, the Louisiana Philharmonic in on the stage uh -huh. and live via satellite the Budapest Orchestra so as a lot of rock stars perform with one orchestra I believe I'm the first one to perform with two <laughs> well, two simultaneously two simultaneous orchestras bravo well you're you're always breaking new ground hasn't that um, been among the... other things yes <laughs> but I think I should get an award at the end of the year if, if not from the the recording academy, at least from the musicians here. Yeah. yeah, because we, re, we employed two yeah. symphony orchestras, yeah. so, yeah. But it's the grandeur that we were looking for. And you, you mentioned the guests. Yes, I've got the whole list here, but yeah. you probably know who they are too. Uh, if people are familiar with the guitar gods of the world, Steve Vai, 
Joe Satriani, Steve Lukather, Dweezil Zappa, Richard Thompson from the folk world, but he shreds like hell. Yeah, that was quite a departure, it, wasn't we, it? Yeah. I found the inner shredder you in him. <laughs> uh, Rick Wakeman on keys, Paul Schaefer on keys. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be the only record I believe ever made to feature as vocalists both Donald Fagan and David Crosby. Uh, two of the meaner, uh, more cantankerous people in rock but and roll. But they answered the call. But they answered the call yeah. and they're sweethearts to me and I love them dearly. Uh huh. And, and, uh, and uh, a, a marvelous uh, singer too, um, Judith Owen. Yes, she's on the record. And, uh, and, uh, and a very well-known uh, actress and comedian, uh, Jane, Jane Lynch, Lynch right. is on the record as what well. Do, what, what, does Jane, what does Jane Lynch do? She did some la-las. Okay. <laughs> we, needed, we needed some la-las and we thought... Is she good with the la-las? She's great. She had every la in place. Because we thought, you know, it's, it's just la-las, you might as well attach a name to it. Um. You know? I think that anybody's going to ask, um, why is there no Nigel or David in this? Um, well, as a solo record. But, 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 but these are collaborations. Did yes. you not ask either of your former bandmates to I, come back and collaborate? I did tell Nigel yeah. that the door was open if he wanted to participate. Was this a call or a text? or? A it was a, 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 a DM? A, Post, I can't use the uh, internet, I'm uh, addicted. I did. You were addicted? I was addicted. I did two bouts of internet uh, addiction therapy <laughs> at uh, Crosswinds, a clinic just outside of was London. This, was this early in the internet? Uh... It was about uh, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my then girlfriend, Cindy, would come in to my room. I'd be sitting at the computer, and I, she'd bring in a, a the dinner, the supper for the evening, and put it beside me. And three hours later, she'd come back, and I was still sitting at the computer, and the food hadn't been touched. And she said, that's a sign of internet addiction. And I said, that's a sign of how bad your food is. <laughs> but she was right. It turns out she was right. Were, the, were, the, were these just emails, or were you surfing the web? Or? Everything, 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 whatever it was. Whatever it was, I was just addicted to that screen. Oh. And so now I'm down to 10 minutes a day on the, on the telephone. OK. And then no, no computer. So, in so that's so back, so back, back to, to Nigel. Nigel. Yeah. Uh, it was in the post, I said, you know, with a stamp and everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, the door is open to you. And that was the wrong thing to say because apparently he has some, some kind of phobia about doors. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go through them or anything. So that was that. And David, this is weird. Where is the, but, but give, just for, just because we don't know. Yeah. Nigel's living where? In southern England. I All right. So you're not like your neighbors. You don't. Oh no, no. So you no, didn't no. like take the letter over and slide it in his. I mail was slot. not his postman. No. Okay. All right. Uh, and David lives where? I don't know where David lives. He's back and forth between somewhere in the uh, maybe in California. It, okay. it depends. It depends. But you reached out to him it too. It depends, as far as I understand it, on what Janine understand his wife. So Janine is still in the yes. picture. What she understands to be the phases she of the She wasn't moon. popular with most of you. I mean, I guess she was popular with him, so. She was very popular with him. <laughs> and she has her own interpretations of what the phases of the moon are. Uh. And depending on those, they move to different. <laughs> so anyway, I, I get letters from him in the post. From him? I, from him. Oh. And it's, it's always on a nice white sheet of paper. And I open um, the letter, when I open it up, but he, it's always written in Chinese pictograms, <laughs> which I don't read. Uh, you know, sue me, I don't and read since Chinese. since you're not on the internet, you can't get a translation. I can't look it up, no, right. no. So I don't know if he's saying, you know, let's get back together, or, or, great, quite great, the opposite. or great record mate, mm -hmm. or I'd like the dim sum for three. I have no <laughs> idea what he's saying. So you made an effort to perhaps have one or both of them collaborate, yeah. but that was sort of for naught. Well, it's not for naught, it's a great record. But <laughs> no. in the sense that. <laughs> well, it came to nothing. There's no bad blood. Okay, that's and, good. But I think, on the, to be fair, bending over both ways to be fair, I think there's no blood at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so, so you knew you were going to move ahead with this yes. on your own, yes. and you reached out to all these incredible musicians. We rang them up, some of them 
we'd, we'd known uh, Steve Lukather, uh, uh, Joe Satriani, Dweezil Zappa had played on a tap record yeah. called Break Like the Wind. And uh, so I knew them. And the rest was just, hello, please return this call. <laughs> hello, please return this call <laughs> again. And finally, and, and you're not on, on broadcasts television, right? Not at the moment. Okay. I didn't mean to rub. Eventually it will be. I don't mean to rub anything in. I'm just <laughs> There's a reason I'm asking. I don't, I don't take it personal. Great. <laughs> and when they finally did return the call, mm -hmm. now there's ladies in the audience, I should change the wording anyway. Uh, the overwhelming sense that I got of warmth and generosity from my fellows in yeah. rock and roll was, if I didn't say it already, it was overwhelming. <laughs> and one of them, I don't remember which one, summed it up in two words, one of which I'll say here. He said, sure, man, it's like a, a pity blank. And <laughs> I took that as a compliment. <laughs> as long as it was a yes, right? That's right. Well, I've been on both sides of that equation. You know, so. um, are there any uh, moments, uh, behind the scenes anecdotes you would, you would want to share with us about any, working with any of these? particular artists that uh, well, will stay with you? There was, there was one that I can't mention here who was a, a very major rock guitarist, rock guitar god, mm -hmm. that we approached and said, would you play on this song? And um, he said, my girlfriend won't let me. So, you know. What did it, you say? I said, thank you very much. <laughs> but, yeah, he said, my girlfriend won't let me. Is she related to Janine? Apparently so. <laughs> apparently it's a genetic strain that goes among rock and roll girlfriends. But uh, it was lyrics she objected to, you know, a little too raunchy for her taste, uh, which is uh, one of the. I'll point out the tune, and you can decide what you want to do about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Love that. It is. Uh, Oh, yeah. It's song number 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, would, you wouldn't play on it either, right? Oh, I might play it. Oh, I just yeah. might not say it. OK. All right. It's getting Here with men in the room. It's getting radio airplay. <laughs> the air women play. can take it's it. It's getting radio airplay. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, so if it's good enough for radio, why isn't it good enough for But it? let me, um, so you're talking about girlfriends, and yeah. they're obviously playing a pivotal role in some of these rockers' lives. Are you currently in a relationship? Are you married? Do you have children? Where do you live? Three ex-wives. So not live in large. I was you're paying all of them? Yeah, yeah. Well, some, one, one of them went, went for uh, the quick stuff. She got the Lambo. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Lamborghini. For that was the first one, yeah. right? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, so I'm living in a small flat uh, in uh, Dulwich, which is uh, on the south bank, south side of the, mm -hmm. south bank of the Thames. You know, London is a, is a very class conscious place. Mm -hmm. And there's a right side of the Thames. I mean, a correct side of the Thames yeah. and a wrong side of the Thames. So I'm on the wrong side of You're the Thames. You're on the wrong side. Which is where I belong. <laughs> That's be because I mean, of, rockers don't Because belong. of divorce. Yeah, well, everything. But no but, children. No. And rockers, that you know of. Yeah, there are, no, they know. There are none. But rockers don't belong in the posh side, I don't think. Well, I you don't lose know. Your, you lose your edge when you're in the posh world, don't you think? <laughs> I'd like to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is there a I, mean, I know your father, perhaps now your late father, was My late very, father. very close to you, very yes. important Duff, to you. Duff, Duff, Duff Smalls. Uh, what was his business again? He had, a, to me, an unusual business. Well, it's unusual for America. It was not unusual for Britain in the post-war era. Um, people were very germophobic in England in those days. Mm -hmm. And so there was a thriving business. In, uh, these people would go about in a little van come to your place every week and sanitize your telephone handset. And he was a phone sanitizer? He was. It was he, had, <laughs> he was. Do you think that may have something to do with your relationship with the phone? Well, it's, no, it's the internet. Well, no, not even the 10 yeah. minutes on the phone. Yeah. But it was called Sanny Phone. <laughs> and he had a great little van, and I would go about with him when I was a kid. So he'd show me what, where to spray yeah, and right. where to wipe. <laughs> and uh, it did very well. And I like to think had he lived into this era, because he would say, what's the most, when he was old, older, he'd say, what's the, Derek, 
what's the place in your house that's got the most germs? And I'd say the bog. He'd say, it's not the toilet, it's your telephone. Because you put it in your, now he says, now, now no it's even, you, you look where you put it. You so put he, it got, he got to experience <laughs> these things. Yeah, and I think, I'd like to think if he'd been a little bit more in his, in his senses in his older days, <laughs> yeah. he could have thought up a, a sanitizing app for your phone. <laughs> for <the> and it <laughs> could have been, you know, the next Bill Gates. Santa app. <laughs> yeah, Santa app, yeah, exactly right. I don't know how you do it. Now, did he, did he, what were his, uh, what were his ambitions for you? Did he want you to work in the Sani phone business? I think he saw the writing on the wall. Yeah? Yeah, he, he saw it was not a, a So long when did you first pick up a, 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 a bass? A bass. I, w I was, I paused there because I knew I didn't want to say guitar. Guitar. I did pick up a guitar first. And my room, my roommate at uh, LSD, the London School of Design, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have much art. Uh, talent, but I went there for the initials on the mm -hmm. T-shirt. Uh, and he was a guitarist, and he said, "Dad, pick, pick one up and let's play." And I picked one up, and I, I don't know if you've ever played a guitar. Those tiny little strings are finger shredders. And yeah, I said, well, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, and I said, "I can't play this." And he said, "Right." Pointed over the in the corner. There was a little Japanese plywood bass, three-quarter size, like you know, plywood mm -hmm. electric bass. He said, "Try that." And I said. This is great. These fat strings are what I want. And that was the moment that I discovered my calling. And you were how old? 17. 17. Yeah, yeah. And how, how, many, how quickly then did you immerse yourself into rock and roll? And at what point then did Spinal Tap come into the picture? I uh, joined first. A, 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 do you remember Scar? The, the music? Of, the music. The, yes. yes. Yeah, was it this, still exists. Yes. This was, for those of you who are eating, this was a, a form of Jamaican music that came out before reggae. Mm -hmm. It pre-existed reggae. It was called ska. And there was a, a fashion in London to play ska music because a lot of Jamaicans had moved there. Mm -hmm. And I joined this band called Scarface, <laughs> which was the first, and I think, Events have proven wisely the only all-white ska band. <laughs> uh, so we had stuff, a lot of stuff thrown at us. We, yeah. it, was a, it was a rough and ready kind of rock and roll world I entered. But know. isn't that a good way to go into rock? I it's mean. a great way to go into rock and a great way to leave it soon. <laughs> uh, so we were playing these gigs, you know. We didn't have what they have in Texas. I've toured Texas, and they have stages with actual netting to prevent the bottles from going through. <laughs> uh, but we didn't have that. Uh, and so then you got clocked in the head a few times? A few times, yeah, yeah. And, I'm sorry uh, about that. It was all right, you know, just keep the beat going. Just keep the beat going. And this was, by now you're, you're how old and you're how close to meeting up with your mates? This is in the, my, become... you know, my 20, 21s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in my 20s, my 21s. 20 is a good, a good, a good, time of life compared yeah. to now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, it's all good. It's all good. It's well, that's, that's the best attitude to have, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's as long as you're <laughs> vertical, you're doing well. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I was walking about uh, Soho, mm -hmm. a neighborhood in London, which you might be familiar with. And in the old days, it's cleaned up a lot. Yeah. It's cleaned up a lot. Yeah. But in the old days, there'd be these little cards on lampposts as you walk about the area of Soho. And most of them would have pictures and little descriptions of women who were offering, uh, let's services. Call it friendship services. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> temporary friendship services. Uh, on an hour by hour on basis. An hour, hourly basis. Or minute by yes, minute, perhaps. Yes, whatever your, whatever your preference, <laughs> whatever your particular perquisites might be. Right, right. And, uh, but there were also some little notices like help wanted. And there was a bass player wanted notice on one of these lampposts. And uh, so I, I did want to get out of Scarface because it was... <laughs> going nowhere. It, well, it was, it was going into the uh, emergency ward. <laughs> and uh, so I, I responded and they, they liked my look. They liked what we call in the business my power stance. Uh, and uh, so I was in the and band. And also your musicianship, I would assume. Well, they discovered that later. <laughs> I wasn't primary on their list. They wanted somebody who looked good. And you a, were a bass player and you had, and had a good And a good power stance. Power stance. Yes. Yeah. And so I was in the band uh, in time, just in time for uh, 
Flower People, which was our, our big your psychedelic first big, hit. Yeah. Your first big hit. Yeah. Yeah, I actually saw Spinal Tap perform. And people may not believe this, but it was actually in Washington, D.C., at the Lisner Auditorium at George Washington University oh, yeah. in uh, probably the late 1970s. Wow. Because yes. I got this. Wow. Look I know. That. Do you remember this? Do yes. You remember <laughs> well, that was, that was not the late 1970s. Break Like the Wind was the 1990s. Okay. Really? Was yes. it the 1990s? Yes, 1992. You were still performing then? 1992, Break Like the Wind. Well, you, pl you were in Washington before. That's, I just want to say that because I can't think of a more unlikely place for Derek Smalls to be than in Washington, D.C. But Well, people in Washington like loud things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just don't think of us as a stop for uh, a, a, a requisite stop for for rock and roll tour, loud rock and roll metal. Yeah, rock loud roll. rock. And I don't know. We we just you know promoters. But said, Spinal Tap was here, and yeah. I did see you perform, and I did see your power stance in performance. And, this is the point of the story. It it was powerful. <laughs> what she said. And it was loud. Yeah. Because I even had plugs in my ears because a friend of mine who was there who had invited me said you're going to want to wear these. Yeah. Yeah. So. We could have made a mint if we just sold those. <laughs> with your names on them. Yeah. You're gonna need, and just, you know, with me saying you're going to need these in the front as you go in. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And then at some point along came uh, whatever his name was, the director who decided to make... Marty De Berge. Yeah, to make the documentary about you. A documentary about you. A rockumentary. Well, a well you like to call it a documentary. No, I call it a hatchet job. A hatchet job. <laughs> Did you do well out of that film? I mean, what kind of cut in the film did the band get? Uh, you know, I, I don't know anything about the business side. What I do know is... Well, did you have a good manager? Re Should I not mention that Ian word? Faith, Ian Faith, <laughs> the, the notorious Ian Faith who faked his own death for tax purposes. <laughs> no, no. And a matter of fact, one of the songs on the record is about Ian. About him. Yeah, it's called Faith No More. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's basically a, a power ballad about betrayal uh, and, you know, what it feels like to be trusting someone with your life and your livelihood and to discover they're using it as, uh, as a plaything. Do you think rock and roll, there's, there's a greater um, uh, incidence of betrayal? Because of because of the, the volume, general, because of the volume, what, what, <laughs> because of the general need to exist in a sort of creative bubble, but you also need this business side to look out for your money and your. We're management. very trusting people. Rockers. So how's that gone for you? Not well, <laughs> not well at all. Do you have uh, a manager right now? No, I do not. My friend, uh, uh, I have a friend in England, Danny, who call, has a great name for those people. He, call, he says, "No, I can't talk to you. You got to talk to my damager." <laughs> Yeah. And that's sort of how it goes down. That's sort of how it goes down. But you asked about the film. Yeah. I think it, we took a hit, reputationally speaking, because if you stop to think about it, if you've seen the film, it's a document of our first American tour. Mm -hmm. 25, 26 cities, one dropped out. And scientifically speaking, 92.46% of the time, we found our way to the stage straight away. <laughs> yeah. But you don't see that in the film. No, you you don't. see the one I'm bloody talking. time that we didn't. Uh, I got out of the pod about, we had a pod of yeah. effect. I purple got pod. A purple pod. Well, the lighting changed. changed it was, it, yeah, okay. it was a diaphanous pod. But you, I got out of it about two thirds of the time. <laughs> you, don't don't see, see you don't see that in the film. So, so it's an agenda. So are you going to tell me that most times the Stonehenge was 18 no, feet tall? No, I'm not going to tell you that. But in the film, it's just the time when it's no, that 18 was a, inches? No, that was a real mistake. <laughs> that was a real mistake. It was just a communication mistake. I was almost, look, in fairness, again, yeah. I was almost late here today. Because? Because. Your manager. I, no, because I saw the listing and it said 12.30 p.m. start, mm -hmm. and I thought that's well, it's one hour after 11.30 p.m. <laughs> and if you stop to think about it, that's what it should be. Well, that would be interesting. I, I'd love that. We could have a very different No, I'm kind just of saying, yeah. 12 comes after 11, yeah. and yet it should, so it should be 
12.30 p.m. should be after 11.30 p.m. Yeah. And then you start again with the 1, because 1 is the start. And then you start the a.m. with the 1. Derek, you're, you're overthinking it. No, I'm just saying that's I, know. I okay, was almost I'm, I'm late. I will go with you on that. So but. I'm just saying it can happen. It can happen. These things can happen, happen with right. people. But so the Stone Age thing, you can't blame on us, you know. Yeah. But no. I'm no. saying. And so getting lost backstage can't blame once, that on you. Once. I don't mean to yell, but once. Go ahead. I can take it. Uh, so now in the aftermath of that, I ask myself, I say, this man, Mr. De Berge, who made the film, inverted commas, film, yeah. he presented himself to us as a, as a fan of the band. Mm -hmm. I want to follow us around the country, big fan of the band. And again, bending over each way to be backwards, I, I, uh, I'll uh, give him that. Okay, he was a fan of the band. I think this is what he thought. These guys haven't really broken through in 17 years. I'm <laughs> going to help this band break through yeah. by making them a laughing stock. Oh. And I felt very bad. I, that was my feeling. Oh, until I re my dad, Oops. the aforementioned Duff Smalls, yeah. said to me one of the wisest things he's ever said. He said, it's better to be a laughing stock than no stock at all. <laughs> well, how did you feel about that, though? Well, did it, you ever make peace with the film, then? Did you ever? I, there's no peace to me. I mean, we're not at war. OK. We're not, you know, lobbing bottles over the Did the it? Did it, well, after its release, parapet. though, you toured, as you pointed out, you came to DC. Yes. Not when I thought you did, but at a, yes. another time. Did it build the audiences? Was, did, did it make it better? I, I don't know. I mean, that was eight years after the film came out that we yeah. did that tour. Yeah. Uh, I, we didn't make people sign a form saying I came because I saw the film, so I don't know. <laughs> no, but... Uh, I mean, you sometimes hand out questionnaires, the, but, you know, it's, okay, it's so a rock... Okay, so let me ask you this, then. It's a rock and roll show. You people don't have, come... Okay, so you probably have a measure of whether people have seen the film. You probably have your own little internal test by what they ask you yes. when they meet you. Oh, you're going to do Stone Edge tonight, number one. <laughs> Are you going to find your way out of the pod, number two? Yeah. Are you going to find your way out of the stage, number three? Yeah. And I guess I know what the other one is. Yeah, you're still wearing a zucchini in your trousers. <laughs> courgette. 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 Well, yes. it's a, that's, yeah, we call it courgette. You yes. call it zucchini. Yes. Again, yes. with the Z and the Z. Why not a cucumber, then? Uh, I've always wondered. I know. people. Are, that's the fifth at most asked question. <laughs> Sorry. And if you, if I'm you, really just here for the audience anyway. That's okay. So, yeah. But if you stop to think about it, yeah. a cucumber is normally a bit too large and almost always... Look, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a thin foil it and was. a very tight trouser. ripped it off. Very tight trouser. Yeah. So it's not only a bit too large for the desired effect, but the surface of it is a bit too warty, uh, <laughs> most cucumbers. So... Not, not what, a good look. Not what you want. Not what you want. Um, and yes, I have thought about it. <laughs> but but this um, but this is what I think we call a perfect segue into um, one of the themes of the new album. Yes. Well, in, in particular with uh, uh, Memo to Willie. Memo to Willie. Memo to Willie. Yes. I think we can talk about that here. Yes. Because again, the, 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 the theme here is the aging rocker. Yes. Uh, what life is like when um, it's no longer hotel rooms full of groupies in your 20s, and you've gone through three wives. Yeah. And, uh, well, they've gone through me. And, they've gone through <laughs> you. and you do look very healthy. I'm good. You, I have a good health regimen, uh, although it landed me in a bit of trouble. Um, I'm a big believer in uh, resistance running against water. Uh, which you know, if you do it. Well, I understand water, and I understand resistance running. Yeah. Do you do it with a, a, a belt and no, water no, rushing just, at you? you? Well, you're supposed to do it in a pool. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Or I, I don't have a pool, <laughs> and, I, and I was doing it in the tub, <laughs> and so I, uh, I'm just back from that injury now. You know. <laughs> um, so, so don't run in the tub. But so. Um, well, I, not to be too personal, but you kind of go there in yes, the album. Yes, 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 yes. Um, are, uh, are you a fan of... Um, Viagra? These, yeah, these things, you know, I, I hear about them. I, I don't personally well, take them. They're not for you. <laughs> they're, exactly, yeah. they're not You're for You're not me. the target audience. And I don't go around asking men if right, they right. do, but since that's... 
I, I feel opened I the can door. Ask is you. what you right. said. Yeah. I, yeah. The song is called "Memo to Willie." Willie is British slang for what you here would call a. Uh, a, a Peter or a, 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 we have a, a, or a Richard. We have a variety or, of yes, names for it. A lot of first names. Yeah. Uh, and so we, it's we'll your, go with Willie, though. It's Let's your go Willie. With Willie. It's your Willie. So I don't have that problem <laughs> since you didn't ask. Um, but I would come Good here. Good on you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would come here uh, on occasion and I'd turn on the telly and see these adverts. Uh, these Nice young blokes, you yeah. know, late yeah. late thirties, early forties. Well, there is a little little but salt and pepper. Just a touch of gray, yeah. just a touch of gray, and nice young piece. That of they put on the actor. Yes, <laughs> and then a, a, what we say in Britain, nice young piece of crumpet, uh, in the you know, riding along with him on tandem bicycles yeah. or rowing. I was just gonna say rowing. Yeah. And, or they're sitting in bathtubs side by side. Right. Or they're hiking. Because everybody sits in dual bathtubs. Of course they do. <laughs> And they look like they're just about to get it on. And yeah. then the voice, scary voice, comes over and says, <laughs> when the time is right, will you be ready? And I'm thinking, is this some sort of epidemic that I missed? <laughs> uh, so the, the, the song was written in reaction to say, you don't need a pill, mate. Just give William a good stern talking to. And that's Mr. Fagan is on that, and also the Snarky Puppy Horns, which is this young, br uh, amazing jazz rock band. And right. The horn section from there was on it, and Michael League, who's the bass player at Snarky yeah. Puppy, is, is also on the record as yeah. well. So we we've got some of the young people as well as some of, you know, the farts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, I guess you won't be doing a Viagra ad anytime soon. Will I'm you? available. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, whatever, whatever fills the till. <laughs> uh, meditation's important to you also, isn't it? Well, not, not, maybe not. Not so, not, I mean. Not, I, not the way. Not, not in the, uh, what's he saying? Keeping you young. Oh, well, I don't know. I think what keeps you young is not taking up another trade, you know, staying with rock and roll. Right, music. Yeah. Music keeps you young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at, uh, well, don't look at Mick, but don't look at Keith. But, uh, <laughs> How about Elton? Uh, Elton, well, look at, look at Is Rick. Is there anyone we could look, look at? Look at Rick think... Wakeman. Okay. Look at Rick Wakeman. All right. Keeps him young. He's a bit spry, Yeah. I would say. But uh, meditation, I do, you know, I'll, I'll sit and just think of a word. <laughs> What's your favorite word? Word. Word. <laughs> uh, you have a reputation as quite a foodie. Um, does that... Does that play a part in your general good health? I don't what know. What do you eat? Do you have rules? I mean, do you, do you drink? Do you do drugs? You don't? I, I read somewhere you've given up the pipe. You just have the pipe, but nothing in it? I have the pipe as an affectation. Okay. Uh, you could have brought it here. We yeah, don't I, allow I, smoking. But, yeah, it would have been a great. But it would have been fine. This looks like a good room for an affectation like a pipe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, uh, I, I never was a substance kind. You know, Here's the thing, Carol. It is Carol, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thanks for remembering. But bass players are a different breed. Yeah. Guitar players are very extreme, excessive kind of people. They're the Icaruses of, of rock. Okay. They fly too close to the sun. They get their wings singed. They have to come back to Earth. Do you have examples? And apply sun cream to the wings. Yeah. Uh, well, examples, I mean, it's rock. That's what you have to be to be, yeah. you know, Apart Tiny. from yourself, do you have a hero? Do you have do you have a base rock a rock god that you modeled yourself? After? I didn't model myself after him, but a Mr. McCartney's not a bad one. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. But you know, so bass players tend to be more moderate yeah. kinds of people generally. <laughs> we're the with I said in the film with a lukewarm water, yes. with a glue, with a with a grout, where whatever you want to say that yeah. whole Grout I like better than lukewarm water, but it's yeah. too late now. <laughs> but you know, we hold it together. So when you know, I did a little bit of the this and that in the day, but you know, it's it's not because it's like oh, I'm trying to be so pure or anything like that. Right. It's just it's my nature. It's just my nature. Did you think? Did you ever? Did you feel that on the road? Um, I missed out. 
No, oh. but that you set a higher standard than your bandmates, for example, that you just... Uh... Oh, I wouldn't say that. Okay. All right, fair enough. But, but I, you, I, just got, I just got a mental picture of a couple of the people that <laughs> I, doing what they I were spent doing a night and, with, you know, and no, that wasn't a higher standard. No. Um, you, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned Paul McCartney, and that, and that prompts a question, uh, because he is Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, um, and I'm if, not Sir Derek Smalls, is that well, your point? Well, because I was going to say, if you had a choice between the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or getting knighted by the Queen, would you, what, which would you choose? Well, let me put it on a, a very uh, just sort of uh, simple basis. Mm -hmm. One you have to kneel for. Yeah, well. <laughs> so I, I don't like That's me. out? That's out, yeah. I, as they say in the hood, homie don't kneel. <laughs> <laughs> But what's with, what's with Spinal Tap not being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Oh, good. I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. has it been discussed? By us? By anyone? Oh. Does it come up? I we mean, talked about it, sure. <laughs> but that didn't Do mean Do you anything. feel robbed? Uh, yeah. I mean, we, I think, you know, every band that you, you see interviewed uh, in the last 20, 30 years will say, yeah, we've had a bunch of Spinal Tap moments. And yeah. they're in. And the band they're referring to is out. So right. if you go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you see a band interviewed and they say, we had a lot of Spinal Tap moments, they might say, ooh, we should look them up here as long as we're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right, and find right. out what that is. Right, and right. then they count. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you'd think it's on them. Have you ever been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yes. Are there references to Spinal Tap in there in any way? I don't know. I didn't listen to. I didn't put the. Right. Things. Well, I just wonder if in, in, in any of the captions at the, of the exhibit. I was so angry when I was there. Yeah. You know. You wanted to trash the place. I really did. Yeah. It was. Did you ever trash a hotel room in your rocket? Uh, room? yes. And then. Uh, and it's required, isn't it? It's Speaking. going on now. Uh, yeah. We have sound it, effects. It's sort of you know what you do, but then as time went on, I think on the break like the wind tour, uh, you could say. That was the year that Spinal Tap grew up because we, we said girls would come up to the room and we'd say, look, we're going to bed, you trash it. <laughs> Have sex with yourselves? Well, just no, you, you, you come join us after you've done it, but okay. you throw the telly right, out the right, window, right, you know. Right, right. Um, Derek, so uh, you're here in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've toured or anything like that, but... Uh, the, recently? Yeah, like while you were here. Oh. Are you here because you have a political cause you are involved in? No. Like some of your rock and roll brethren? I'll tell you, Carol. Carol. Uh, I'll be, I'm interviewed by so many people. I know. And uh, I'll tell you, Carol, I had my one brush with dipping my toe in the, in the dabbling into politics. Yeah. A brush with the dipping of the toe into the dabbling. So I <laughs> approached it very carefully. Um, and it was in the early 2000s. And I read, you couldn't avoid it reading about this then, even in the British press, uh, that the Americans had these prisoners in a place called Guantanamo, I believe it was called. And that they would, one of the things they would do to uh, you know, try to deal with them psychologically, yeah. weaken them, break them down. Make them talk. Was to play rock music very loud <laughs> all night long. And they would say in these stories, they played Metallica and ACDC and Queensryche and all of this. And I couldn't help myself. And I, I gave a press conference uh, and I said, I don't. I can't, in, in good conscience, understand how the great United States of America can, uh, with a straight face, do this and not include Spinal Tap in the playlist. <laughs> and that was it. And that was it. And I got this, and it was on the front page of the New York Post, Derek to Gitmo, one louder. <laughs> and uh, the blowback was something fierce, and I just went, I, never I can, again. Well, I get that. I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. Um, so we and they're have, still doing it, and they're still not playing us. Yeah, well, I, you could send them this. Yeah, I could. You could make a contribution. Yeah. Um, well, we have a minute left. The time has wow. flown. Yeah. Well, because we're having a great time. Yes. At least I am. I am. Um, so tell us, though, where where can we where will you be appearing? Where where will you be? Will you stay in the U.S. for a while? Will you come back to Washington? I'm going to London. Back to London next week. Okay. And we're putting together the rest of the tour. Okay. From there, which should be either late. 
might start late this year, might start early next year. Mm -hmm. We're also filming the show for television. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and uh, I just made my third video which is coming out Your next videos week. are wonderful, and yeah. I recommend them. They're on YouTube. They're and, on YouTube uh, and, and, and MeTube, if you want them. And MeTube and HisTube. Uh, uh, well, that doesn't sound the, quite and right, the, And the it? new one, no. <laughs> and the new one is uh, based on one of the songs in the, in the record, and it's called MRI. And it's about one of the things as you Speaking age. Speaking of tubes. And, and when, as, you, as you age, one of the things you experience. And you Americans have a, a word that you use called a journey. And the journey of this song is starting out fearing this machine and being afraid of it and hating the way it sounds and the, and the confinement oh, gosh, and everything. Yeah, it's horrible. And then midway through it, as a proper rocker, I realize it's banging my head for me. <laughs> and then it's a happy ending. So that's the journey of the song. Well, and this is a happy ending. Yes. Um, Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. I'm so honored that you joined us at the Q&A Cafe. I thank all of you. I thank all of you at home. Be sure, it doesn't look like this when you buy it, but you can get it on. It's extremely available. Small change. It's thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.